chose that song to be the intro song for this, but it was in my mind when I was like, I want to talk to you about codependency. And then this song came on in my head and I was like, cool, great song to start with. Great beat. All right. I'm going to give it a minute to wait for people to come on. I saw that um, some of you are really interested in this topic. It's a really, um, and say hello if you're here. Um, this is a, uh, this is, the reason why I'm talking about this today, about codependency, is because I wrote a post yesterday about, um, I actually said that if you're in a codependent relationship, that's okay. Codependency is okay. Um, and I had a mentor reach out and um, highlight something to me that was really interesting. I was like, cool. So this is a live video to um, take back what I said about codependency being okay. Um, there's nothing, I said there's nothing wrong with codependency, right? So this is the thing about codependency. It exists in our shadow and our shadows are our um, survival consciousness, right? So what that means is people in codependent relationships are codependent out of fear and safety. They're seeking safety and, 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 um, and they're codependent for survival, right? That's why it exists in the shadow. It's actually part of the shadow of the victim archetype. Um, so let's go through a few signs of being in a codependent relationship. So if you base yourself and your um, sense of safety and approval on your partner and what they think of you, you are codependent. If you are um, uh, base decisions, so you can't make decisions for yourself and you are reliant on checking in with your partner, checking in with your friend, checking in with your family, whoever it is, you're codependent. If you're constantly asking other people's opinions rather than tuning into what's true for you, you're codependent. If you are um, uh, putting other needs, other people's needs above yours in exchange for the approval that they're offering you because you you want to be helpful, so this is what you would this is what you would be telling. This is what the codependent sounds like. I just really want to be there for them. I just really want to be supportive and. Um, make sure that they're okay and I know that I can help them. I know that I can, you know, really support them through this. Essentially what you're saying is that you can rescue them and that's why I was talking about how this is part of the um, victim archetype is that you believe that somebody is a victim. So you believe that they need your help in order to survive. And this plays into the drama triangle as well, which if you haven't watched my live video on the drama triangle, I highly recommend it. Um, but when you're creating this dynamic with someone that someone needs to be rescued and saved, what you're actually doing is enabling their behavior that they are and, and enabling the, the illusion that they're a victim. There are no victims. There are no victims. Every single decision and choice that we make is our responsibility, even coming into this body, is our responsibility. It's on us. So therefore there are no victims. We create the whole life. We create it all. Um, but a codependent believes that there are victims. A codependent believes that there are people to save. A codependent believes that they're, they're, they thrive. Someone who is codependent thrives on what other people think of them. They thrive on um, being needed, right? So if you're a codependent in a friendship, for example, you will thrive when your friend calls you and they're in crisis and you're giving them advice and you're supporting them and you're there for them and you're on the other end of the phone or you're having a coffee with them or whatever and they're, they're, they're needing you and you're there to support them and you're feeling like, yeah, I'm such a good friend. Yeah, I'm such a great lover. 
and you're, you're, you're having this conversation in your head, you're like, yeah, they called me, they needed me, I'm here to save the day, you're codependent. Because you are relying on your sense of self and sense of identity on the basis of um, supporting someone else. Which again goes back to what I was saying before is the, 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 the root of that is the belief that there are victims and that they need saving. Right? You are codependent if you are um, people pleasing. I can give you a very um, big and strong story around this. I was in a codependent relationship where I actually had thoughts. I actually had the thought, I'm going to support my partner in his dreams and maybe one day he's going to realize just what an epic girlfriend I am, how supportive I am. He's going to realize how much I love him, just how supportive I've been. And he's going to, he's going to give me what it is that I desire, right? He's going to give me time. He's going to give me energy. How many of you are having these conversations in your head? Are you in a relationship that is toxic where you are um, trying to please your lover in order to receive love from them? This is enabling the shadows. This is, so the shadow, as I said, is the, the, um, the survival archetypes that are playing out in all the things that you do. Right? If you don't know what shadows are, I'm actually going to do some more. Um, the shadows are based, I'll just tell you now. The shadows are aspects of your unconscious, right? And you have four survival um, shadows that are operating. That is the prostitute, the child, the victim, and the saboteur. And these are the voices of the shadows, right? And so these voices are actually governing your life. And they come from survival. And there's a whole tool around this, and I won't get into too much detail about it. But if you really analyzed your psyche and looked at what it is that the that where your decisions are coming from and where your energy is held, you would be surprised at all the things that you're doing out of survival. And codependency is one of those things because it's safe for you to rely on someone else. It's safe for you to be in um, a relationship that is um, like codependent. In a relationship where you base your sense of self and identity on someone else. And so the issue with this, guys, is that when that person leaves, when you break up with that person, or if this person does something or goes through something, it affects you. What you're actually, what you're actually doing in a codependent relationship is you're allowing someone or something to have power over you, rather than being independent and standing strong in your own two, on your own two feet, and having your own sense of identity and being your own unique self and being authentic. Being in a codependent relationship is actually extremely inauthentic because you're not showing up as who you are. You're not saying what you really want to say. You're not doing what you really want to do. You're not behaving how you really want to behave because you're addicted to the love that is coming from the outside, the source of love that's coming from your lover, rather than sourcing that love from within, rather than sourcing that sense of identity from within. And so when this person does something that ups, this is why people argue, this is why people fight, because they you place your expectations on how each other should be behaving. And when they don't fulfill those expectations of what you want, you fucking fall apart. This is why relationships fall apart, is because of codependency. And you don't even realize you're doing it. You don't even realize that it's happening. Um, I did a Google um, search to have a look at specific traits because I was really curious about what, um, how to identify this. And some of the things that come up are having difficulty making decisions in relationship, right? Having difficulty identifying your feelings. This is a big one. 
Are you able to actually identify your feelings or do you identify your feelings with how your partner is feeling? So if your partner is upset, you're upset. If your partner is happy, you're happy. Like that expression, your happiness is my happiness, babe. It's fucking bullshit. That is bullshit. Your happiness is not dependent on somebody else's happiness, ever. Your sense of, like, and your sadness is also not dependent on someone else's sadness. So if you value the approval of others more than you value yourself, this will come up when you're faced with a decision to do something that you want to do rather than what other people want to do. You place... Instead, if you're codependent, you will actually do what other people want to do above what you want to do because their approval of you is more important than you approving what you truly desire, right? Um, and therefore, that creates a lack of trust in yourself. So these are some of the things that, have, uh, as I said, have, uh, you can Google search this. There's so many traits that you can look up. I'm actually going to create a downloadable check self-evaluation checklist to see um, if you are codependent. Um, and yeah, so are you lacking trust in yourself? That means that you are question. This is where doubt comes in, right? You're questioning who you are, what you want, what you like, what you don't like, because you want to please your lover. You want to make sure that you don't, that your source of love doesn't leave you, that you don't get abandoned. And you, you're, you're in this toxic dynamic of just shadow shitstorm is what I call it, where you're just, you're, you're, you're allowing your shadows to run the show rather than being in your light, being in your power, being in your truth, being in your authentic self, being completely real and completely you. I don't know if people are commenting, I should probably check on my phone, um, but I'm not receiving, I'm not seeing any comments come up. Um, yeah, so... Having an exaggerated sense of responsibility for the actions of others. Do you find yourself like in a position where somebody else's actions, it's like you're at a party, for example, and your partner gets really drunk and out of control and then you feel responsible for their behavior. And so then you're telling them how they should be and what they should be doing, that they shouldn't be drinking too much because that's inappropriate. Like, you just take it upon yourself to um, to be responsible for what they are, how they're behaving. Yeah, there's no comments coming up. I don't, I'm just assuming that no one's commenting. Um, so, how do you overcome this? How do you overcome codependency? Um, I've called it conscious unrelating. But this is going to be a program that's available for couples, but I'm making it. So what this means is that you no longer relate to your partner. You're in a, you are in a relationship and yes, there's like love and all of that sort of stuff. But your sense of self and who you are has nothing to do with your partner and your relationship. You become completely individual beings who happen to share a life together um and this is where we go deep in, into the shadows of my one-on-one -on -one containers the black diamond vip so we actually dig into the root level reason why you feel the need to be in a codependent relationship and you can change this you can be in a relationship right now that is codependent and you can both grow out of it you can both choose and decide not to be in a space of relying on other people and needing your lover to fulfill something within yourself. Um, <laughs> drop the mic right there. Yeah. So what you want to get to is a space of um, you're doing your thing and she's doing her thing and you come together when you come together and then you go apart and you go apart. So when I was with my ex, I... Um, I expected him to be there for me. I expected him to help me through my shit. I expected him to save me. When I was going through um, some really deep inner personal development work, I had like a meltdown. And then I had like 
my abandonment issues come up from shit that happened in my childhood that was completely non-related and the story I had going on was I'm feeling abandoned and I expected him to fulfill that for me and to 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 be something for me that had nothing to do with him I expected him to support me I expected him and if he wasn't there then he was abandoning me how fucked up is that is that true is that true no it's not true he wasn't abandoning me he was just doing his thing and I had an expectation of him to be something for me or be someone for me because I didn't have my shit together and then when he didn't fulfill that for me I would project my shit onto him because I was in my victim feeling sorry for myself throwing all the pity parties and being like yeah man I need your sympathy I need you to feel sorry for me because I can't deal right now. I need you to, I need you to save me, right? And then it would be the other way around. When he was going through stuff, I would be there like, let me help you, let me save you. I'll be there for you. I'll validate myself as a good girlfriend if I'm there to support you and you receive that support from me. And then this means that I mean something. This means that I matter because I'm helping you because it's not enough for me to matter without need, without you. I need someone to validate me in order to feel like I matter. I've actually had conversations with a few of you men recently who are in relationships with women like what I used to be. I'm no longer like that anymore. I don't need no man. I'm a strong, independent woman. But actually, what I've come to realize from being in a codependent relationship is how we both played the codependency card. How we both were codependent on each other to fulfill something within ourselves rather than just being whole and coming together even though we thought we were whole and coming together wholly but we weren't the pattern was repeating itself so so your question is what you want to question is how often are you saving someone men this is for men how often are you finding yourself attracting women who are needy and clingy, who are expecting you to be there for them whenever they're in crisis? This is codependency. How often are you finding yourself um, feeling like you're not enough, that what you're offering is not enough. This is the training that's just rocked up. How often are you not saying what you really think? Man, you have, you have this really awesome, like, you know, somewhere along the lines, women decided that there was a right way and a wrong way to deal with our shit and the right way is to get in touch with our emotions and to i don't know if it was women i don't know who it was but you know somewhere along the way we decided that there was a right way to deal with things and a wrong way to deal with things the right way being you need to be seen you need to be heard you need to be validated which creates a codependency because we don't actually need anybody else in order to like i don't need to be seen I'm just showing up as my real self in every fucking moment. People can take it or leave it. It's called having each other's back. There's yes. I see what you're saying there. You support each other in the sense of um, you can do that in the light. So you would alchemize the victim into the warrior and the warrior would come in and support you in enforcing the boundaries, upholding the standards, being there for you. So it's like if you have each other's back, if you truly have each other's back, then you would not enable victim consciousness. What you would do then in having each other's back is be like, let's get fucking real about this right now. Am I really abandoning you? I've got your back. I want to see truth in this. I want to help you grow. I want you to be in your light, not in your shadow. There's nothing to fear here. 
You don't need me to feel safe. I don't need to be anything than other what I uh, other than who I truly am for you to feel safe. It is your choice to decide whether or not you feel safe right here, right now. This is what's being thrown out in the um, in the world. I don't want to just limit it to the spiritual community, but this is the thing: like people are feeling unsafe. Why? Why are you feeling unsafe? You need someone else to make you feel safe. That's codependency. You rely, your sense of safety and security is dependent on somebody else's behavior. If it matches what you, what you think and deem is safe. And so everyone's like tiptoeing around these eggshells, tiptoeing around codependency. If you truly have someone's back, you would want them to be in their truth, in their power, in their strength, not in the shadows of survival and fear. Um, so you can still have, I am going to download this Adam and this is going to, this is going to be available on my feed to watch later. So, and I'll be downloading it and uploading it onto my YouTube as well. So yes, to answer your question, yes, you can get a recording of this. Um, yeah. Like we've got to shift out of this codependency guys. Does anyone have any questions? We, the thing is about, so what I was saying about being seen and being heard is this disempowerment that is so fucking real because you have a belief that in order to be validated, you need to be heard. Otherwise you're not validated because it's not enough for you to validate yourself. You need someone in your external world or something in your external world to validate you. And this is great if you want to be at a particular level of consciousness, but as we're evolving, guys, we're reaching new heights. The truth is we don't need somebody to validate what we think. We don't need someone to see us. Do you see you? Nothing else matters if you have your own back. Nothing else matters if you are um, in the space of just like solid as a rock, um, unfucked with the ball, like just in the space of not needing anybody else to be who you are. So what I'm teaching you guys is that there is so much power available for you when you stop giving a shit about what other people think of you. When you stop giving a shit about basing your decisions on what other people want and that, what they desire. When you start tuning into what you really love and you start tuning into what you really desire and you start doing what you actually want to do, like, I didn't understand it at the time because I was codependent, but my ex didn't want to go to weddings with me. He didn't want to do any of that. And I felt fucking offended. I was like, he doesn't want to go to a wedding with me. I need a man who's going to be standing by my side and coming to weddings with me. The truth is, guys, I actually probably wouldn't have had as much fun as I did if he was there. Because he doesn't, he meshing with my friends was just never like, get. I don't want to babysit my lover. I just want to be at a wedding with my friends and have fun. Like I don't need him to be there for me to feel okay to be at the wedding. But see the codependent relationship um, or the, the survival is telling you that you actually need, I need that. That was telling me I needed him. What does a healthy non codependent relationship look like in your view? That's a really good question. So it's the opposite to what I've been saying, basically. So a non-codependent relationship is the opposite of codependent is being independent. So essentially your sense of self and well-being is not dependent on the other. Every you go into the relationship personally responsible for your shit you're owning your shit so basically what that means is if i have a trigger come up or if i have something that is yeah let's just say trigger 
I'm not looking at my partner to help me solve that problem. I go and deal with it on my own. I go and sort through that out. It's not his responsibility to help me through my shit. It is my responsibility to get through my shit. Just as it is his responsibility to get through his shit. And to overcome his triggers and whatever it is, right? And so a non-codependent relationship is when two people come together shadow free. And this is a very rare thing. I don't I actually don't know anyone in my field and my sphere that is in a non-codependent relationship. It requires extraordinary mastery of yourself in order to meet someone in their mastered self and to come together in that space. Um, so, yeah. Um, so what you would see from someone who is in a self, like a mastered, and this is what the Black Diamond VIP um, one-on-one container is all about, teaches you all about self-mastery. It's an accelerated two-month program but basically what you want to get to is like having certainty of your standards and your value and your self-worth and having like radical self-love and it's such a diluted word again overused but having radical self-awareness and self-love knowing who you are knowing what you want knowing what you desire knowing what you'll stand for knowing your boundaries knowing what you're willing to to do what you're willing to put in, knowing um, it's just it's just it's 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 just knowing um, what's yours and knowing how to Knowing how to move through all the things that come up for you and not relying on someone to save you. Because shit will come up, relationships are like infernos when it comes to learning about yourself. And so when you're in that space and, and, and things will come up, it's about mastering, I think I'm just repeating myself guys, it's about mastering yourself and mastering what it is um, that this particular it's overcoming your fear of illu and illusions and stepping into the light of truth and power. And when people and both people can do that, that's when you're in a healthy, non-codependent relationship. I just took the long route, guys. I took the scenic route to get there, but yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions for me? Yeah, I just, if you can imagine like the emotions of a relationship that you've been in um, and just the roller coaster ride and the, this like push and pull and this, um, reliance The, you know, it, it's, there's a different energy between having someone support you in their light versus having someone support you in the shadow. And the difference is this. If someone is supporting you in their shadow, they're supporting you in their shadow because it gives them, it validates who they are. When someone is supporting you in their light, they're supporting you from a space of truly, like, just truth. They don't need anything from you in exchange for the support that they're providing you. They're not rescuing you. They're not trying to save you. They're just there to support you by speaking truth to you. Yeah, I'm actually going to go live this week with um, uh, Amanda Bolderson, maybe this week or next week, who is another relationship coach and she coaches women, so I coach men. And we're going to go deeper on this topic. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that. Codependency is actually what's ruining your relationships. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to overcome your codependent patterns and behaviors or not. 
how do you not fall back into the same patterns? When I'm single, I'm very independent, but the codependency trap finds me every time I'm back in a relationship. How do you spot the codependency mirror and other people, prospective partners? Okay. What are those red flags to watch out for? This is really good. This is a great question. Okay. Um, so if you, you know the red flags, Lacey, so think back to, think about what it feels like to be independent, right? You're constantly making decisions and choices for what you want in that moment and what it is that you, you, you really want. So you have your standards and you have your values of how you want to be living your life. The red flag is the moment you start negotiating with your own values. When you start compromising on your standards because you want, because the source of love of that person, like that, what that person is giving you, that, that, that love or that um, comfort and all the things is more important to you then you're standing strong in what you value. And so the red flags are that, looking out for the conversations you're having with yourself. Um, and to spot the codependency mirror in other people is it the same thing. Are they negotiating with themselves? Are they compromising with themselves? Are they um, pleasing you? So for men, men will often like, so if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're someone who is, um, experiences like just say you're having a hard time at work and your partner comes in and they're trying to save the day and and problem solve and all the things um it's that is them feeling like they need to um save you i think that's what i just said so yeah does that answer your question And another thing that you can look out for is like some of the things you might say is um, I'm always the one doing everything in this relationship. I'm always the one putting in all the effort. I'm the one that's like making the changes here. I'm the one that's doing this. I'm the one that is putting my life on hold. I'm the one that's constantly trying to work around his schedule or her schedule. I'm the one doing this. I'm the one doing that. that that's when you're codependent because you're not seeing your own value in your in yourself and so you would so when you don't see your own value in yourself that's why those situations arise that's why you're faced with constantly being the one putting in the effort and the red flags as well just to add to that codependency is just one element Look for your patterns in relationships on all levels. What are the red flags that you decide not to listen to? The things that don't sit right. Like, for example, in my, um, in my last relationship, there was a time where early on in the relationship, like a few months in, maybe two or three months in, me and my ex-partner had planned to go away for the weekend and he cancelled on me half an hour before we were leaving. He was just being himself. He needed to write music, he needed to do his thing and keep work, keep at his work, right? Six months, seven or eight months later, we planned to go away for a week and he cancelled again, right? Rescheduled or whatever. And I was heartbroken. And I had this thought maybe a few months ago, just before COVID hit actually, and I was like, huh, that's a red flag that I missed, that I decided to overlook. He showed his true colours from day one. From day one, music was his priority, always. It's on me that I decided to overlook that and stay, because that's not my standard. I want devotional love. I want a man who is like a king and treats me like a queen. And, and I want to have a relationship that is where we co-create, but we also have our own things. We share a life together and it's just like this magic, euphoric, fucking awesome existence of just fun and play and all the things. I don't need him 
for anything and he doesn't need me for anything. We just come together and we're living this extraordinary life, right? Um, but in that relationship, I was like, oh my God, I need him to go away for a week. And if he doesn't, then I fall apart and my whole world is completely collapsed and I'm just a mess and I'm just upset and he just didn't do this and he didn't do that. But he showed me his true colors from the get go and that's a red flag I decided to ignore. I decided to stay because I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to prove my love to him. I'm going to be the supportive lover. I'm going to be there for him. I'm going to help him set up his his um, shows, pack down his shows. And then one day he's going to see how valuable I am based on all the things that I'm doing for his approval and his love. And this is just like the most toxic it doesn't look toxic, doesn't feel toxic because it's not really like it's a pattern and it's a behavior that's just um, repeating itself. Like this is not the first time it happened. This has happened in previous relationships, but obviously it was very clear in this particular situation because I actually put my whole entire life on hold. I stopped everything that I loved doing and did everything that he wanted to do because it was his lo like the validation that I would get from him loving me was more valuable to me than me valuing my own self and what I truly wanted and my own desires. Um, yeah. You were saying before that your standard of what was important to you previously was having your partner come with you at weddings. How do you know that your standards like this are genuine and you shouldn't compromise on it? We're coming from a different place because I wanted him to come with me to a wedding based on what other people would think of our relationship. I was more concerned about what other people thought about him and me and showing up at a wedding with him by my side because I cared more about what other people thought rather than what was actually true. And the truth was that he just didn't want to go to the wedding. And so that is survival. That's shadow. And the shadow is placing value in other people's opinions above my own. And I'm thinking that I needed him there in order for me to feel confident, in order for me to feel like I was going to be okay at that wedding, right? But the truth is I don't need him there by my side at all. The other thing, the flip side to this statement is that I value... Um, um, I value spending, um, creating memories with my partner and I value, it's all about the reason why. So I value, um, yeah, sharing and doing all the things together and, and going to weddings. But like at the same time, it's like, do I want to go to a wedding of his friends that I don't really want to go to? Probably not. The society has created this like, you know, um, idea that we need to do everything together because if we are without the other person then we're lost so you have to dig 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 deep into why um you need that person to be there so you can have a genuine standard that you value family and you value relationships and you value all the things because whatever but like if you're relying on that then it's that kind of clingy, codependent energy. Does that answer your question? I think it does. And the other way to know how, the other way to know that your standards like this are genuine is how you feel if you, they do not go with you. Does it matter? If you're feeling really kind of like triggered or upset that your partner hasn't gone to a wedding with you, then you know that that's coming from a space of fear and survival. And that's why you dig deep into understanding what the reason is behind that. Also, you were saying that you needed to go away with him and we're falling apart because it wasn't happening. And that's codependent, but also him valuing himself and what he wanted to do was a red flag. What he wanted to do, this is a really good question. Um, 
I value a man who sticks to his word. My standard is that I want a man who sticks to his word. And he would say and make promises and he didn't stick to his word. And so I value a man. So my time and energy that I put aside to go away for a week was not, I didn't value my time and energy. So that's what he was reflecting to me. But what ended up happening in that situation is that he also wasn't valuing my time and energy. So we were coming together and I was like, because I wasn't valuing my time and energy, he actually reflected that in his behaviors because I was giving so much of my time and energy, like working 12 hour days just to support him in his business. And then when it came to that, I didn't have that because I didn't value my time and energy, right? There's that mirror. Um, and so that was because I was codependent on him, right? So yes, he's valuing himself, there's truth in that, but he is also um, co-dependent, he was co-dependent to, there's another whole other can of worms for that, but he was co-dependent to his um, stuff, which I don't want to get into because that's his business, and I'm not really, yeah. Um, but yeah, do you see how, if valuing himself, he he could have um, just not promised to go away for the week. And that would have, that would have been him just valuing his music and valuing himself without making, um, without trying to please me. Because that was also a thing for him. He was trying to please me and make me happy. And and that's why he would say those things and, and, and not following through would actually create, obviously, the opposite of what his intention was. Um, but the codependency and the nuance in that is the sneaky part of that is, like, I need to make sure she's happy Otherwise, I'm not happy. Like that situation that week of cancelling that thing, like sent us into a spiral of fucking shadows. It was really intense, really intense. I was like, I feel abandoned. You've abandoned me. You've not like. I'm. I was going through a lot of stuff. Around, this was a couple of years ago now. Two years ago. Two years ago, actually, I was going through. Um, I was getting. I was seeing a coach about my. Uh, just the story around feeling abandoned with a few things with my life and my um, biological dad and all the things. And so I saw that as him abandoning me, which obviously isn't true. It's just that he was, he needed to do music. The truth is that he just needed to do music. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with what he wanted to do and his choice. Yeah, it was, So you want to look at you want to look at how you feel when the person when you when your partner is um, you want to see how your partner's behaviors affect you. That's what you you want to pay attention to in a codependent relationship. If what your partner chooses to do has an impact on your well-being, as in it sends you off into like a spiral of just emotional havoc, then that is a good sign for you to tune into why you're feeling that way, why their decisions have power over you, why is it that um, what they, what, what is it, what is the story, what's going on? Why is your why is your emotional well being being affected? Excuse me, on how someone is treating you, or not treating you, but their decisions and their behaviors. Do you guys have any more questions? Questions are great. I actually really enjoy the questions because then I'm able to like a lot more comes through. Um. I'm actually going to put together a PDF self-evaluation checklist that's going to be really tuned into the voices of codependency so you can actually hear for 
um, what it sounds like when you're in that space of like, um, yeah, it's just a bit more of an overview and then you can self-evaluate. And then also, I think what I might include in this PDF, I haven't created it yet, I just feel like, yeah. I'll, I'll include how you can move, but you guys, I can't, it's, a PDF is great, but it really comes down to the inner work that you do because the shadows are sneaky. The shadows are so sneaky that you, it's happening unconsciously. As I said, the shadows are in your unconscious. So the survival programming that um, you're operating in is happening unconsciously. You're not aware of it. And so, and that's what my job is. My job is to bring the light into the shadows so that you are able to transform what you're unconsciously doing. So if you're unconsciously operating from shadow, what you want to do is re- design your unconscious, reprogram your unconscious and um, restructure it so that your unconscious is actually true, is operating from truth and power rather than um, fear and survival and safety. Because the truth is nothing has power over you. Like, it's universal law. Nothing has power over you. But we have been conditioned into believing that things do have power over us. People's words have power over us. People's actions have power over us. That's what's running the show. That belief, that paradigm. And so that's why people get offended when people make sounds that happen to put together a sentence that they decide is offensive because they're making that person's opinion matter. When in actual fact, you decide whether or not what someone thinks matters. If someone thinks that you're an idiot and you buy into that bullshit by caring what they think, then you're, you're actually, um, you are reinforcing the belief that something has power of you rather than disrupting that paradigm and completely shifting it out of your consciousness or transforming it, alchemizing it into the truth. Because what you want to do is you don't want to get rid of your shadows. Your shadows are a source of energy. So when your shadows are coming up with this um, survival of what they said to me really upset me, there's so much energy to be unlocked there. What they said to you actually doesn't matter. And then what you will find is the truth of what really matters. And what really matters is what you think of you. What really matters is how, um, what you think of you and what you're willing to make matter. And when you decide that what other people think of you doesn't matter, when you decide that your what your lover thinks of you doesn't matter, you're standing in your strength and you're standing in your truth and that is true authentic expression. Yeah, I digress a bit. Um, and this is what the Shadow Alchemy tool teaches. This is actually the tool that I use when I'm working with my clients as I look at what is going on beneath the surface, in the survival, in the fear, what illusions and stories are you telling yourself and how can we how can we um, access the truth and, and alchemize that fear into power? Um, yeah, and the Shadow Alchemy tool was created by a woman called Lorna Johnson and it's available. So um, hit me up if that's something that you want to learn more about. And this is like, so like the Black Diamond VIP is is like the most potent transformational experience that you will ever come across when it comes to transforming your the way you do relationships and unfortunately i'm not working with women at the moment i'm only working with men um but eventually i will work with women i will open up that container but that, at this point in time i just want to focus on working with men and on that note guys there is a free challenge that i'm running next week called rediscover your masculine and that is the four day challenge. And it's all about reigniting your masculinity that has been either shamed or shut down or whatever it is. So if you want to learn more about that, shoot me a message and I'll send you a link. It's a free challenge. 
Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I think if you have any more questions, please, by all means, reach out to me. Love to continue the conversation and stay tuned for a, um, a live stream that I'll do with a friend of mine, a fellow relationship coach about going deeper into this topic. All right. I'll see you guys soon.